All right, so this morning I hopped out here and got the alternator out of the way and then started getting the bolt. That's as far as I can turn it. Um, I'm gonna go down and put get the bottom bolt on the uh, motor mount out and then I'll put some pressure on the jack and I should be able to pop that mount out of there. All right, so I just took this bolt off of the bottom of the motor mount and it's an 18. Now the weird thing is, I tried it with the new motor mount. So I get this over here, and hmm, but these other bolts. So I'm gonna have to look through my bolts and see if I have another one of these. The other issue is I don't think this is going to work because this particular mount has two bolts. No. Never mind. I'm just looking at it upside down. Don't don't mind me. I'm working on sh short sleep. Okay. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little pressure here so I can get this bolt out because right now it's just kind of wedged in there and that should be the last thing I have to do to pull this mount. All right, so I got the old motor mount out and it looks a little different. Now, what I think you end up having to do is take this nut off here and take this bottom part and screw it onto this guy. I believe that is what you have to do. That way this is the correct parts. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm, other than that, it looks right. It's just uh, definitely need this bottom piece. So, all right, so I'm gonna swap this over. Hopefully that's all I need to do. Okay, to get the bracket switched over is not that difficult. The hard part is, is the outer loop that goes around everything when you tighten one side down it wants to make a giant gap which this bolt's not long enough and so what i used is a small c-clamp screwed it down until i had enough threads put the nut on and then went ahead and just slowly tightened it down so now it's all back together so on this side we only have to worry about the one bolt and the center bolt um, i'm going to test fit this in there and if I need to, I can take some of this paint and uh, whatever this sealant is, because they don't always fit down inside there real nice and cleanly. Uh, but everything else looks good. So we'll see if we can get uh, this mount in and we'll go from there. Okay, so the mount fits in there pretty good. The only problem is, where can you see it down in there? That center hole there, is not centered between the two arms and so when I put the mount in it's way pushed back so just like the other side we're about a half inch too far to the rear the motor is leaned all the way back against almost against the firewall right there I can't even get my finger in right there that's how far it leaned the motor is so I'm going to I need to get the alternator up here a little. What the hell is that? There's no juice, so I don't know what that was. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna have to go under and try to lift the rear of the transmission to push everything forward. So I'm gonna go underneath, disconnect the two mounts for the transmission from the skid plate and hopefully that's enough that I can lift the motor and push everything forward. Um, the other option is once I get the back end up, I could throw some ratchet straps against the motor mounts, hook them to the front bumper and kind of pull it forward just a little bit. Um, that might be the option. So, yep. So, yeah, the motor mount fits in between the brackets, no problem. It just doesn't line up with the hole. Uh, unless I jack the motor up a little bit more, I can't even put the through bolt in. Um, 
and I don't really want the motor resting on the thread because then when I go to thread it in it's going to bunge it up so Ooh. I guess that's what we got to do we got to go under the Jeep and figure this out okay so what I have here is a metal 2x4 that I just happen to have and I put it between the frame mount and the motor mount and set the motor down on top of that so that I can jack up the other end with my big tall jack because none of my jacks are other jacks are tall enough to even reach the bottom of this thing and then once I get the back end up I'm going to go ahead and hopefully come around to the front and uh, things will start lining up so we will see um, I will put a uh, jack stand underneath the transmission uh, at the highest point and then go from there. I guess I'm going to have to do a transfer drop because this drop thing that they put in is uh, kind of pointless. So, Alright, so underneath I go. Oh, and I did take out the jack because it was in the way. I couldn't reach down without having to reach over and around. So out came the jack. It was pointless anyway. Um, I guess I can use that space now to relocate the winch controls, make new cables, get this shit all done. Alright, I gotta find out what my dog's working at. Alright, so I'm going to remove those two bolts. I'm not sure what that third one is over there, but I don't think I need to disconnect it. Um, but... I've already knocked a lot of mud and crap out of there. And there's still a lot of mud and crap up in there. So eventually, I will need to drop this whole damn thing down just to clear the mud out. But first things first, because we have these two inch spacers, it's dropped the engine and it's really got it kicked back um, to just correct the driveline angle. So we're definitely gonna do a transfer case drop and get rid of the spacer and once I verify for sure what transfer case I have I'm going to get a slip yoke eliminator kit um, but first things first will be shocks and we're just going to do this one little piece at a time I guess because uh, this is turning into more of a money project than anything just so many little things that need to be repaired or replaced. So let's go ahead and get these off. These aren't even the same. At least they don't look the same. All right. So hopefully we get that sorted out. Um, I'm hoping I don't have to drop the rear drive line, but we will see. Okay, so the, those first two were 15s. That one's a 15, but I needed to go get a deep socket for it. So now I've got that. I'm gonna zap that out of there. This way, I'm not sure what it's attached to, but this way it's completely out of my way. And then I can come back here and jack things up and figure out where I'm gonna put the jack stand. Uh, maybe I can put the jack stand up here towards the front. Um, not sure. Okay. So we will see. All right, well, it might be stripped. Because the 15 grabs, but when I try to do anything, it just spins. So I'm going to go find, a, let's see, I'm gonna go find an American and a 14. And, uh, See if I can hammer one on, then I'll have to look for a new nut. All right, so after trying 15s and 14s, all I could get it to do was spin. There's a nut up here on the top. It was spinning both. I had a wrench on it. Everything just spins, spins, spins. So it looks like it's just a through bolt of some kind that's holding a bushing. So I took my cutoff wheel and just sliced the damn thing out of the way. Um, I'm gonna have to fix all that stuff up anyway. So, next thing on the agenda is to get the jack under there, but 
We have some medical supplies that are supposed to be delivered here in a few minutes. They just called, so I have to get out from underneath this. And regretfully, the wound on my wife's backside has gotten a little bigger. And so we had the nurse out this morning and they're concerned. So my wife is back into bed for a couple hours during the daytime now. So she gets up for a couple hours, back in bed, up for a couple hours, back in bed. It, it's tiring on both of us, but uh, all right. So while I'm waiting for the supplies, I'll get myself something to drink. I'll take this with me and uh, then we'll come back out and jack it up. Okay, as you can see, I've jacked up the transmission and it is almost all the way to the top. I got the jack stand here. I got the jack on the tail end of this. Uh, there is a lot of mud and crud up in there. So yeah, I'm going to have to replace that bolt right there. Let's see if we can get some light on it. Yeah, we're gonna have to replace that when I cut the end off. So we'll be able to fix that. I do have a new transmission mount but I'm gonna to have to drop all of this and clean this up anyway. So, um, I'm just making sure that the transmission is in a good spot before I set it onto the stand here. I've got it all the way up against the plate. Uh, so, hopefully that will bring everything up in the front about where it needs to be. All right, so let me get this set down and then I'll move the jack around and see if I can get the front end to go where it needs to. Hopefully I can uh, get this done today. All right, so now I can get my hand behind the motor and the firewall. So hopefully that pushed everything forward a little bit. So. What I'm going to do now is move the jack again, get it out of here in the front, get this jacked up, and see where our motor mounts line up now. Um, I'm hoping that that was all I needed to do. I've already set the jack down, so it's out from underneath there. Um, so that's what we're working with. All right, so let me move the jack. Let me get everything repositioned. Let's see if we can get this lifted up and set down where it needs to be and cross our fingers. That's something else I just noticed on the uh, roller. The bottom roller is missing its pin. What they did was just run the cable in as tight as they could so it pinched it in so it wouldn't fall out. Also, um, we're using nails now to uh, secure stuff. That's always fun. So, something else I need to repair. Um, but So now we're moving this around here so we can get up underneath the pan there and get this lifted. Alright, so... That's looking a little more in line. What I did on the driver's side, let's go ahead. I just had the bolt resting in the motor mount. What I did was put the motor mount back to the frame and you can see that the motor is actually uh, pulled towards the driver's side. So I need to pull the front of the motor that way and everything should line up. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what we can do with this other motor mount real quick see if we can get it in in there and sort of lined up and then uh might have to put the pry bar on things and kind of scoot them over uh, but i still can get my finger behind the motor so i still got plenty of room to go up if i need to move things around all right so on the passenger side I went ahead and put the through bolt in and left the bottom one out so you can see, I don't know if you can see that, so the motor mount's swinging back and forth. I'm going to lower it down just a little bit and see if I can get it to slip, slip into the hole. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to try to push the motor over because I think that's what it needs. At least I sure hope that's what it needs. It would be nice to get these mounts in here today. But yeah, so this one 
is really off. So I'm thinking that the motor needs to go towards the passenger side quite a bit. So let's find out. All right, might be a little hard to tell, but I sort of have this motor mount lined up. What I have is a ratchet strap kind of going around the bracket, around my hoses so that it's not pinching anything, across the top of my car to this bumper, and I literally just went ahead and ratcheted it over. All right, so now it's time for me to go inside and get my wife back out of bed. So I'll come back out here in a little while and see about setting the motor down. Hopefully everything lines up. Okay, so I've come back out here. So I'm gonna start lowering this down a little bit. Um, I'm more focused on the passenger side, getting the bolt to go into the frame mount than I am going to be worried about the driver's side. Um, it looks like things are lined up. I just won't know until it's pretty close. So we're gonna let the jack down a little bit and see what we get. Okay, so I have a ratchet strap connected to <coughs> Bless you. So a ratchet strap connected to the AC bracket, pulling the engine towards the passenger side. It feels like the passenger um, bottom bolt went through the frame mount. Um, there's very little tension on that. I got this big board on there so I don't crush my finger or fender finger. And it looks like the driver's side is starting to go down as well. I did have to put a pry bar between the uh, mount and the block mount um, just to get it to slip. It looks like it's lined up now. So hopefully I can lower it down just a little bit more and maybe get those bolts to start lining up. Uh, if not, I'm gonna go ahead and put some bolts in on the passenger side, just finger tight, keep everything in position. But first I'm gonna lower the jack down. All right, so a few trips up and down. I have the bolt that slid in. Um, it seems we still need to do some adjustment on the rear. I can't tell if it needs to go up or down at this particular moment. But since I have the bolts in place, I'm gonna go ahead and get the bottom bolt on the driver passenger side in so that I don't pull it back out. And uh, then I'll finish working that other bolt back in. All right, so there's the bolt. It's just the one. You gotta fish that through the frame here to get to it. You can get your fingers here so you can guide it on. So I've got it hand tight. It's still got a little bit of a gap. So I have some movement. Now I'm gonna finish getting the driver's side one in. Um, transmission is sitting on that. I guess I am gonna go ahead and drop this pan because it's full of mud and shit and I'll get that all out of there before we do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and order the uh, switch parts so that I can do the vacuum delete. Since I'm gonna have this all apart, I might as well just go ahead and do that and I'll worry about changing out the, uh... oh, I'm sorry, I got lost. I'm looking at that water drip there, trying to figure out where it came from. Um, try, I'll do the uh, disconnect on the front axle later, but I can do this while I have it all apart and I have easier access, so. All right, so let's get on the driver's side and then we can start tightening down those bolts. Okay, so I'm having a hard time lining up the back hole. Um, the front one is nice and smooth. The back one, I'm not sure where we're off at. So what I have is a large punch. I'm gonna stick it in the hole on the back side. It's tapered, it's small enough that it should fit in. And then I can kind of wedge it in and pull on it and push on it by hand. And I can kind of figure out do I need to go up with the jack, down with the jack, pull the motor towards me or not um, that should help me get it in I am working by myself so I have to get creative sometimes with how I do things so this will be the best way I don't want to hammer that bolt in 
because uh, I don't want to mess up the threads. So I'm going to use this punch and see if I can get things aligned. Okay, so it started. Um, I put the punch in, I kind of got things lined up, and now it is going in. Still got a little tension, but I don't know if you can see where my finger is down there. Maybe not. So, so difficult. Let's see. Can. That's it right there. So that is the edge of the frame right there. The bolt is sticking out, so we're golden. So we got all the bolts in. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting those in, tighten them down, and then uh, we'll uh, figure out what I'm gonna do next. All right, so bolts first. All right, so I got the passenger side bottom motor mount bolt in and torqued down. Um, the jack is no longer supporting the engine. You can see a gap there. So the only thing that's supporting the back of this right now is the uh, jack stand here. Um, I do plan on swapping this axle out for an 8.8 .8 sometime in the near future. So probably when I do the um, axle, I'll probably do the transfer case drop um, just depends. All right, so I am going to finish up on the passenger side here, tightening down the bolt, putting the alternator back in place, and then going around to the driver's side. So let me move to that. Okay, motor mount is tightened with the through bolt. I have tightened that bolt there because it didn't need to be t taken off and I didn't know that. So next we're going to put the alternator back in place. Um, I did disconnect this center wire because it was in there and it was pulling tight. So I've got to remember to plug it back in right there. So let's go ahead and get the upper bolt in and then that way it'll be easier to put the lower bolt in. All right, so going back together fairly easy. I got the lower bolt in and tightened up. I got the upper bolt back in and tightened up and I have the sensor plugged back in. So everything on the passenger side is currently done. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now we're gonna go around to the driver's side and finish up. So on the driver's side, you can get to the through bolt, but it is much easier to do it from the bottom. So the easiest one to get here from the top is this one right here. With a couple of long extensions, you can work above, just right above your um, brake master. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that one down and then I'll do everything else from the bottom on this side. And just like that, that bolt is tight. Um, I'm using two of these, I believe they're 10 inch extensions and that gives me plenty of room to work with with just a shallow socket so all right down to the bottom okay that took a second so i have the motor mount and two bolts and the through bolt on the driver's side all tightened up passenger side's all done um <sighs> So the next thing I had to do was put the alternator back together, but I'm gonna leave that off because um, I'm kind of debating on whether or not to do the chain tensioner since I'm gonna pull the radiator out here anyway because I've got a new one coming. So there's that. Um, so I'm gonna clean up my tools for right this second, take a little breather, and we'll call this done for today. Um, I'm going to leave the transmission on the thing so I can take the skid plate out here, clean it all up. I'm going to order the connectors and everything I need to do the conversion for the transfer case. And uh, so that'll be in another video. But uh, I guess the next video will be taking the radiator and getting that all cleaned up so I can put the new thermostat. My motor for the, um, not thermostat, the motor for the... Um, heater should be in i have the new heater core already in so that will be that so oh i do get one more part let me show you that 
All right, so this is my battery tray. It's had the edges hacked off on both sides. It has the support hacked off on both sides. And it's just sort of hanging out in there. Um, I have to take all this out anyway to get to the um, bolts that hold the heater box inside. So it doesn't really matter. I was going to take this all out anyway. But I was talking to my neighbor who has a couple of YJs. And he built himself a dual tray and gave me up his old tray. So now I have a new one to put back in. This will be temporary until I go to dual batteries. But uh, that was nice of him. Saved me for shopping around. Um, I have ordered the bracket for the TJ um, power steering pump. So I ordered the bracket. Um, I will be ordering the TJ intake manifold and probably getting a TJ pump or at least the pulley for the TJ that way I can get to the bolts but other than that that's just gonna hang out like I said I'm gonna get rid of this fan um, this belt needs to be replaced I'm getting the aluminum um, um, radiator with the fan built into it so that that's all cool um, and then eventually I'll clean this all up, hopefully, and uh, someday I'll get this thing over to the amusement shops instead of just working on it. But need to fix these things. Oh, and my airbox, my factory airbox came in today, so at least the admissions part should go fine as long as it's not got some other issues. I'll probably run some carb cleaner, intake cleaner stuff through it. I'm just double checking my work here, make sure I tightened everything up. Um, there's a sticker on the uh, starter. I don't know what that is, or if it's just a reman starter. But it's funny, now there's a buttload of room, but of course the engine is still sitting at the correct level because the transmission is up. But, uh, all right well thanks for watching and uh next video will most likely be me pulling the radiator and doing all that stuff